Sounds good. Um, so hi, hi everyone. My name is Ahmed Haroni. I'm a technical marketing engineer here at NVIDIA. Um, can you see my screen and uh, hear me okay? Yeah, we can. Okay, great. Uh, sorry, I, I'm not going to share in a fancy way like uh, Ben and <laughs> Michael are doing. This is uh, just opening the collab. Oh, sorry, the notebook uh, in collab. And I changed my um, like device to have a GPU here. Uh, so if I run NVIDIA SMI, you will see uh, the GPU. Uh, so as Michael mentioned, uh, this notebook is going to be doing uh, like end-to-end -end workflow. So we're going to take everything that you've learned so far especially the pieces uh, that um, were mentioned to you and uh, kind of create a, uh, a network and uh, see how we can train. Uh, so I've already ran this cell to just uh, import and um, install Oro Monai. Uh, is the font okay? I tried making it larger. Is this visible for you, Michael? Um, it works for me. Um, I'll let you know if anyone else mentions anything in chat, but we can kind of go with that for now. Yeah, I, I increased a little bit here more. Yeah. Okay, uh, so what we're going to be doing is uh, setting up our data, preparing some transforms, defining the network, and uh, like doing the, the training loop, and then we're going to have evaluation. Uh, and then later on, we'll just give some hints to uh, some Ignite-based workflows. Uh, and in other notebooks that Michael will cover, we'll talk about bundles and Mona Zoos and uh, things that you can take off the shelf. Um, so uh, was this... Just let's get started here. The first cell uh, here, there's a bunch of imports uh, for uh, utilities and uh, Monai applications, uh, networks, transforms, et cetera. Uh, here, we're just going to uh, prepare uh, the data set. So this is just going to uh, create a temporary directory for us. Here, we're going to download uh, the Madness data set. Uh, this is kind of uh, like a small data set uh, that um, you can uh, like download real quick and uh, play around with. Uh, we'll see in a bit uh, samples of it. Uh, here we are setting uh, a seed, and then this is kind of where I'm, uh, we're gonna just see uh, random images from uh, this Madness dataset. So the label that we have are like abdomen, uh, breast MRI, uh, CT, uh, uh, X-ray, head, and uh, head CT. So uh, as you see here, uh, this is basically just uh, reading through the directories, having the class names, and uh, sorting uh, the images in the directories so that uh, you can have uh, these images. And we're printing here the sizes and the label counts for it. So this is the image that I mentioned. As I mentioned, it's uh, small uh, like images, but it's it's still like quite uh, like large. You have like almost 60K of it. And uh, you have the, these uh, like uh, six, um, like classes that we want to classify or create a um, classification network for it. So if uh, we create a kind of just pick randomly here, this is kind of uh, just the random image that you get uh, from them. So you have hands, you have uh, abdomen, uh, like CT, uh, you have a chest CT, and you have a head CT and a chest X-ray. And the goal for our uh, like task here is uh, to take this simple uh, like data set and have a classifier that uh, will classify uh, an image given to it to one of these classes. So hopefully this is kind of simple enough. So we have here, this is kind of uh, the initial thing that uh, we wanted to um, like ask you to do is basically how are we partitioning uh, this data set? So using, uh, uh, I'm not sure if Ben or uh, like walked you through this, but there is a class here called like how to partition this data set, depending on the classes. And uh, we would want to recommend that you uh, open the documentation as in the link here and kind of figure out like what's the parameters and how to actually uh, like use this. So I'm walking you through this, searching, and then reading in the documentation how uh, this like class is being used. Let me make this a bit bigger. So I'm not sure, Michael, uh, like yeah. how far are we behind? Maybe we can... Um, we have about... A little bit of time. 
Yeah, we have about another 35, 40 minutes until okay. we switch over to the next section. So we can give people at least five minutes to kind of look at it and try and then come back. Okay. Um, so what I, yeah, I would encourage people to do, I, I put the link for this collab in um, the chat again. Uh, I'm going to put it in Discord as well for people who are over there as well. Um, implement it with the with suggestions that are there. Um, and if you have any questions, let us know in chat. If you already feel comfortable with this sort of workflow, you use PyTorch or you've used Monai before, we've been linking a lot of different notebooks that are in uh, Zoom chat that are around different topics. So people were asking about things like the caching data set. We have some caching data set examples in our tutorials repo. So what I'm, I'm gonna also do is link to the tutorials repo. So if you are interested in working on something else that you may be interested in, because you already are familiar with this part of Monai, then feel free to go over. And a lot of them have Google Colab links as well within them. Um, so that's kind of a good way of, again, just getting familiar with what is actually there in the tutorials repo. Um, people ask about things like lightning. Um, there's some lightning examples. There's ignite examples. There are some data set loading examples, caching examples, uh, TCIA examples, loading the, with the wrapper data set things. There's a lot of other things in that tutorial. Um, so yeah, work on this one. And if, if it's something else, go ahead and work on one of the other tutorials and try running through it on your own. But we'll come back at, um, we'll do five minutes from now. So in 10 a.m. Pacific, but roughly about five minutes from now, we'll come back and we'll show the solution for that. Um, and then we'll go on to the next activity. We'll do another five minutes and five minutes for the last activity as well. Yeah, and maybe I can comment real quick on the caching question uh, if it's not like 100%. Uh, yeah. So assuming that you kind of cached like just 50% of your data, you're going to get the first hit. And then in your epochs that you're taking out of this 50%, you're going to be getting all the advantage of the caching and accelerating formula. But then again, you run out of it and then you want to load the other 50%. So you're going to get the next hit again. So every, every quite some time within your uh, training epochs, you will get like a, a longer loading time because it's, it's caching uh, this data set. There is another thing that's called like smart cache, but this kind of changes the kind of notion and the dynamic of uh, what's the meaning of an epoch. So maybe you will need to look at the documentation to uh, know more details about that. So in the meanwhile, uh, sorry, yeah, so I'll go, I'll go through and answer. Time. There's a few other questions that were asked as well. Yeah, that's what I'm kinda... trying to do. Uh, find, but... Yeah. If it's helpful, I can always put them in the Google Doc and share it, um, and that way we can answer it there while people kind of work work in the background. Yeah, I'm trying just trying to open the chat here on the side. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so one of the questions that I saw was, um, and I linked a little bit, uh, a tutorial kind of around maybe something that would be useful, but someone asked about utilization, monitoring mm -hmm. resources and utilization. Um, I know, Ahmed, you've sort of done the TensorBoard GPU utilization dashboards for kind of monitoring that generally. Correct. So uh, uh, I see you already linked the performance uh, for the profiling. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if it would be helpful to uh, go through it, but uh, you are right. Usually, um, I mean, let me see if I have uh, one of these notebooks. So 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, so... Yeah, so I usually um, like run Jupyter Lab. Not sure how many people um, are using this, uh, but typically um, the Jupyter Lab will have like you can open different notebooks and have a terminal and console. And usually I, I would open like TensorBoard to uh, like monitor my experiments. Uh, there is a plugin that is uh, like would show you uh, the GPU utilization. So this plugin is GPU dashboards uh, from NVIDIA. And this usually is how I would monitor either the machine resources, uh, the GPU utilization and the GPU memory. So what I would usually do when I'm testing this here, I have two GPUs, this is my local host. Uh, I would have um, the GPU memory and the utilization on one side and just monitor like how much CPU memory uh, for the machine itself and also the GPU resources. So I would open, uh, all right, this is, and let me make this bigger. So this is usually what I would like be usually like doing. Um, I don't have anything running on the GPU, so it's um, I'm just idle here, but this is where I usually would see the peaks in the GPU memory usage and the GPU utilization. And if I'm running a multi-job, this graph will like be helpful because it shows all of the GPUs. Uh, hopefully that, that was a bit helpful. And let me uh, copy yeah. here the answer for this. Yeah. And, and so hopefully people that. had enough time to run out to, to work on yep. that. Uh, so let me maximize this one. Uh, so here, uh, what we uh, would be doing is uh, we would be using this uh, partition data set class. And uh, sorry, I, I think, Michael, if, uh, if you can put the, the link for the main repo, there is uh, like yeah. another notebook that has solutions in it. Yep. And this is kind of where uh, I'm copying this. So uh, here, what we are doing here in this partition clause is that we are giving uh, the data, the classes, and uh, the ratio. We wanted uh, to create three data sets. And sorry, maybe I was not, uh, I, I didn't <laughs> elaborate much of the exercise. We wanted to uh, have a train, uh, validate, and test top sets. Uh, usually, the split that we want is 80, 10, 10. Uh, so here, you can do this as 8, 1, 1, or 80, 10, 10. It's just, it's just a, uh, a ratio and we wanted uh, to shuffle this and we also wanted uh, to give the random seed so that uh, this is kind of deterministic if you are running uh, this multiple times and uh, we you can see here if I keep running this uh, it is already like picking this random seeds every time but uh, every time I set the deterministics with the seed if I will run this again it will give uh, the initial images that had these uh, like four hands, so these are the same exact images. So this uh, passing of uh, the seed, just ensure that every time you are running this, you are getting exactly uh, the same uh, images because all of the random transforms are, are using the seed. Uh, so after that, uh, this part is actually giving you the indices uh, for this like uh, 80, uh, uh, 10, 10 partitions. So we are looping over those. So uh, for each of this enumerator, we are loading the image sets and the label sets. And after that, for the image sets and the label sets, we are getting the, uh, the train and the validation and, and the test of them. So when, when you print out, you will see that uh, these are the number of images in the, your training, your validation, and your count. And uh, they're kind of uh, like a pair. So you have uh, the training and uh, the classes uh, for X and Y. Um, so any questions regarding this or any clarifications? Was this simple enough or was it too much for an exercise? Uh, let me go back to the chat. 
I don't see any questions directly about that. I okay. see some other questions, but. Okay, so. Uh, there you go. Someone said they found the exercise tough to do it. Uh, yeah. um, was it about the amount of time that we had to do it? Yeah. Or was there just kind of the, do we need to do a little bit more guidance for the, the exercises before diving into them and letting you guys try? Correct. I, I think it took me yesterday when I was trying it, like maybe 15 minutes or so, because uh, I initially thought this class will already do all the work for me. But then I'm like, when I printed out ah, this part, I kind of found that, oh, it's an indices. So I needed to do uh, more work here. So uh, so next, next is basically, hopefully this exercise will be simpler. <laughs> next is just basically, we, you want to do uh, like the sets of transforms that uh, you would do. Uh, so we want you to write down uh, like the transport, sorry, the uh, transforms for the training and for the validation. And uh, basically these are like, we want to load, uh, ensure that you have channel first, uh, scale the antennas and doing uh, some random flips, rotation and, and zooming. And again, that's kind of where uh, the documentation would be helpful here. Uh, so, um, so I'm gonna just try to verify and type for transforms. And this changed a bit. Uh, or maybe I'm not maximizing it. Usually I have a bar on the side to show all the vanilla ones. Yeah. Uh, the answers for all of these are in a separate notebook. It's actually in the repo as well called, uh, it's, it'll be Modi end to end workflow dash solutions. So even now, if you want to go look at them and put them so you can copy and paste it into the, your existing one, you can always go through and do look, look at the notebook on GitHub. Yeah, I think it's still. Uh, yeah, I don't know why it's not showing them there. Yeah, my interference is a little slow here. There we go. <laughs> yeah, but you'll see here when I just type transforms, I'm here. These are the transforms, the mapping transforms. Yeah. Uh, you have the vanilla, the dictionary ones that you um, you could use. So here we're not going to be using uh, the dictionary ones. You can uh, just go to the vanilla ones. And you will see here, for instance, the cropping and padding. So initially, uh, so here, random, uh, we want random rotate, for instance. Sorry, I'm usually using the dictionary one, so. <laughs> <laughs> so this is add channel first, for instance, add channel last. So maybe we'll give like uh, two, three more minutes. Yeah, well, maybe we can do a little, slightly more. Um, my next section, I could. Uh, It'll be a little bit less than 30 minutes, so we can go maybe to 1040 um, for this one. So maybe we give another like five minutes or so, um, let people get a chance to try to work on it. The thing also I'll point out here is that there's a transform, the train transforms and the validation transforms, because when you do the validation transforms, you typically don't do your random uh, transforms in that chain. So sure. they won't be exactly the same. Um, and then down below that block, there's a test function so that it's actually calling out to the train. And then there's a commented out validation transform call that takes the first image. And that way you'll be able to see, I mean, if it even runs. So if you are missing something as well, just generally from the syntax, it won't run. And then some of the parameters that you might put in, um, if, if some of the values are too high, it, it may end up not seeing much of the actual image itself, but you should see a fairly clear image of um, the data itself printed out down below. So that's kind of a nice test function. So after you write a few of them, test it out and see what it's actually doing. So if I can help out here a little bit without giving away all of um, the yeah. stuff they just do here. 
you have uh, this transform, this is the training one. And then it, uh, if you guys uh, like run this. Oh, why did that not? Yeah, I didn't do it. <laughs> maybe I'll need to get away more. It may, yeah, maybe, it may need, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me try here. That might work. There okay. we go. So for this, I just loaded the image, ensured it's um like channel first, and then scale the intensity so that it's like within the um near two fifty six like range. And again, there is more parameters in there that you can actually use for the scaling. You can specify the minimum and the maximum. Uh, and then I guess the exercise should be simpler now. You just need to figure out how you want to rotate, flip, and, and zoom for this, and then uh, add the validation ones or the validation transforms for it. And as Michael mentioned, uh, once you get the training transforms right, uh, you will just have to uh, have a subset. Actually, basically, this is actually the validation. I think that is <laughs> the validation is the one, yeah. <laughs> that don't have any randomization in them. Yeah. yeah. And someone was asking whether they could be, um, it's, we, we've always tried to figure out this balance of how much do we go into some of the, the overall training loop and how in depth do we kind of go for some of these boot camps? Um, because we could spend quite a bit of time on like this notebook alone of, I mean, two, probably two to three hours working through it and slowly kind of explaining each of the sections. Um, so it's always this, this balance of how much we go into some of these. Um, mm -hmm. Just generally for sort of the, the workflow, I mean, just when you, any of the sort of the deep learning ones, we're sort of gathering the data. We'll, in this case, we need to do some transforms and randomizations to the actual data to make sure it's in the right format and the right, um, if we want to do randomization to it, so it's not always the same exact data. And here, we'll actually, next the activity, we'll also start defining the networks and the losses and metrics, which we're not going to go over in depth for what those are, how necessarily to use them. But part of this is just kind of getting exposure to the Monai API and going to the docs and searching for some of them. Um, if you yeah, look at some of the other... Show, there is a lot of examples here in the Monai tutorials. Uh, get yeah. people, and I'm trying to figure out or uh, to find one that um, kind of uses the best practices. But again, as you see here, like there is a lot of uh, notebooks and a lot of ex uh, examples for it. Um, so yeah, yeah, here, I think it's even acceleration, not even 3D. Yeah, that fast training tutorial or fast training guide is also one where it kind of talks about why do we choose certain yeah. things or why can we do them. So this is uh, this is usually the, the tutorial I would uh, go to if I want the best practices for speed ups. Uh, and this is basically once you understand the concepts, you kind of like figure out um, uh, how or what you would actually do. Uh, so here, see there. Uh, like later on, they are using the caching data sets and these are the like different arguments. Uh, they use like threaded uh, data loaders. Uh, again, here, if you are struggling with this, you kind of like go and like figure out more uh, like examples of like how the transforms and what was the most common one. Uh, this is using the dictionary transforms, uh, which usually would do, you would do in mo uh, uh, most like segmentation um, uh, like problems. Uh, but I just wanted, or maybe I'll, I'll get back to that later when we are like doing uh, the, the training loops to point out a, a couple of things. But I just wanted to point yeah. out that there is a lot of um, like examples and tutorials to uh, guide you through that. So usually you wouldn't write everything from scratch. You would just uh, kind of get familiar with the concepts, figure out, oh, this is kind of the most optimized one, and then uh, tweak it to your problem. So I, I'm just going to uh, copy the answers here for this. Let me just. So here, um, what we wanted to do here is uh, the transformations for uh, the training and the validation. And here uh, we did the, uh, like a series of uh, transforms. First is the loading, and we only wanted the image out of this, ensured the channel first, then scaled uh, the intensity. And then we added this uh, like random rotation. So we you just give it a, a range and a probability that it will be triggered. And then we did uh, the set 
the with the random seed uh, so that it, again it's always uh, deterministic so that when you keep on like uh, running this multiple times it will uh, still give you the same uh, like uh, results uh, we did some random flips and again with a probability of uh, 50 percent again de depending on your like uh, like problem you can uh, definitely keep on uh, like tweaking uh, these parameters if you have a lot of like random probabilities you might want to like decrease those to like I don't know 0.3 or 0.2 or you want to say no I I, I want to like augment with 50 percent because again uh, like the images could uh, like be mirrored uh, similarly here this is the zoom uh, transform uh, you wanted the minimum zoom and the maximum zoom so like 90 percent or uh, like 110 percent uh, and again, this would be triggered uh, like with 50%. Uh, as, Monsha, as we just mentioned, uh, you will do this augmentation in your training uh, loops so that you can increase your data set. But on the validation, you want to actually uh, keep it uh, without any augmentation because this is kind of uh, the validation numbers. This is the data set that you want to actually get the results out of. And uh, finally, we have uh, an activation and uh, then we want to uh, like convert the probabilities that come out uh, or we want to uh, figure, like find the one, like one hot, which is what is the, the class that has this, um, uh, what's the correct value out of uh, the, the output. So here, if uh, we run uh, this cell and uh, we run this right now, this uh, will show uh, like first three and Oh, this is only showing the first three. So uh, I wanted to show if you keep running them, you are going to get uh, like different uh, like randomization out of them. But uh, again, it's the same image. So this here now it, it's it's flipped in a different orientation for you. So these different uh, like random rotations and random flips and random sorts, uh, sometimes they are triggered, sometimes they are not. OK, so uh, moving on here. Um, what we wanted to do is we want to uh, like have uh, like a, a class to have this uh, data set and we want to define the batch sizes and the number of workers because uh, we are going to uh, just go into like creating different data sets and the uh, data loaders for it. Uh, so here this is a simple uh, class that uh, will have the images and the labels and the transforms and uh, we will uh, create uh, the training data set and then we're going to pass this data set to a data loader. Uh, we're just going to use here the most basic data loader, uh, so no caching or uh, like nothing complicated. Uh, we're just going to pass on the batch size, uh, ask to shuffle and run them, uh, pass the number of workers. Uh, for the validation, we don't want to like shuffle that. It really doesn't uh, like matter anyway. And uh, here for the data set, uh, for the test one, uh, again, we are not going to uh, like shuffle that. So uh, if we run this, you will just get those uh, three data loaders with the, uh, the number of workers. I think uh, here, this is just a warning for the maximum number of workers that I can use. And uh, finally here, or maybe the kind of the next exercise that uh, we would want you to do is again, go to the documentation. Uh, this should be straightforward. Um, we just want you to uh, like write one liner to detect if you have a device uh, that's uh, like would enabled or not. If not, then just uh, return the CPU. Uh, and then this is kind of like what is the network that you would wanna uh, like wanna like the classifier to you. You 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 wanna use. Uh, we suggest you use the dense uh, network uh, 121. Uh, there is a class for that. So I can just uh, like pick that and then uh, pass in the parameters of like uh, spatial dimensions and uh, like what's the input channels and here. Uh, uh, some clues for you. Um, loss function, you can choose from multiple loss functions, but you want to uh, like choose the cross entropy loss and uh, uh, add a multiplier. So I think we can give maybe like another five minutes or so for this. Yeah, probably another five, five to seven minutes or so. Um, there are a few other questions as well. So someone asked about um, event handlers, and I'm assuming they, they were talking about things like Ignite event handlers. We aren't covering this here, um, but we do have some tutorials on it. And there, I linked a diagram that shows kind of where some of the 
which events uh, map to certain functions as well. So you can take a look at that one and then it might give you an idea of it, but we, we have examples of it in there. Um, someone was also asking about con finding contours to things as well. I was actually looking for the tutorial because there is one where we kind of show the contour outlines of the segmentation mask at the end. But I can't find it right now. But you can do things like finding contours or doing, if you have, if the segmentation mask has maybe some small outlier pieces, you can do keep largest connected and that'll get the largest connected mask that you end up getting at the very end for things. So we do have some helper functionalities that do things like that as well. Yeah, you find I'll, I'll it. Try to, uh, like find those two here. Uh, so I they're usually in the utilities. Also, why this is not cool for me? Is a label to contour one. So here's a post processing transform notebook. I'll put it in chat here. I'm not sure why this uh, is very still page here for me. Maybe everyone is accessing the documentation. This <laughs> is taking it slow. Yeah, if you go. There's a, a link I, I put in chat. I'm in uh, the second to bottom one in Zoom chat. I don't know if you can, oh. if you click on that one and scroll to the bottom of that notebook. Um, let me know if that's what you're. Oh, you're, you're, uh, you found the notebook itself. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah, there's one that gives an example. So if you're at the very bottom. There yep. we go. Yep. That, that's the one that I was looking for. This is kind of segmenting the spleen and then uh, getting the contour over it and then uh, doing the overlay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then I, I think we can go up to find that transform. Yeah, so there's, I think, a keep largest connected, label to contour. Oh, Oh, I think it should be in the um, thing. Oh. Yeah, keep or just connect component uh, in case you have kind of outliers and then it's able to contour here. And yeah, this, this is just doing some detaching to uh, move to the CPU and then display that. Yeah. And then one last one here was, um, someone was asking, is there an ex example to extract features from 3D medical images? Do you want to expand on that a little bit more? What kind of features were you looking mm -hmm. to extract from things? Um, someone also asked about decolate batch and there's also a notebook talking about decolate batch as well that I'll link in uh, chat here in a moment as well. Someone is asking if um, if it's ITK based uh, post processing. I think yeah. they are. We are using uh, as much open source library as we can, so we are not like reinventing the wheel. And depending on the feature or the functionalities, we are um, like including or using these uh, like ITK based uh, functionalities or uh, other libraries. Yeah. So I know for sure, like we are, we are like we can open DICOMs, but we are not like doing that ourselves. We're just using external libraries to do that. Uh, okay, so I, 
again, I don't want to yeah. uh, like take too much time. Yeah. So here, uh, we just added the learning rate. As I said, all of these are just one-liners. So uh, your learning rate, uh, your device uh, here, this is getting the tour device. Um, if you have like CUDA, the first GPU is taken. If, you, if there is CUDA, otherwise we're going to return CPU. And then here, this is the dense uh, net. We just test in that uh, we, it's, it's going to be 2D. Uh, as you see, we can also like provide uh, three-dimensional images for it. Uh, we have an input channel that's one, and I think the example that uh, Michael was showing, uh, like sometimes uh, you can actually have multiple uh, like inputs to it. Um, yeah, so th this is fancier like thing. Even even if it's two D images, you might want to like scale or pass in different uh, windows in the medical imaging. This is brain image. This is subdural. This is bone window. So you kind of play with the uh, scaling intensity ranges, and then you can concatenate all of those. So here, uh, your channel will be like uh, three, and you can still do to uh, do this uh, like uh, classification. So um, you specify that here in the number of input channels, and then uh, the output channels here are the number of uh, classes that you do have. And, and then you pass those into uh, like two device, you're gonna move this network architecture to the GPU that you have. Uh, loss function here, as I mentioned, you just uh, use the cross entropy loss, or you can uh, pick, I think there's plenty of uh, loss functions that uh, we have. And the optimizer, we uh, picked the Adam optimizer, and we passed in the network parameters and uh, learning rate. So this is pretty much uh, like standard. And uh, after that, we're just gonna go into uh, like the training loop. So in the training loop, you are defining uh, like the number of epochs here. We're gonna be like uh, like short, so it, take, it doesn't take too much time. Uh, we're gonna do four epochs. This matrix we're um, like kind of initializing to negative one. And uh, we're just gonna have some values here so that we can accumulate the losses, the matrix and the uh, uh, area under the curve, lower OC, and um, we're just loading those. Here, this is basically uh, the main loop for your training. So we're gonna like loop here for the four epochs. Uh, we're just gonna like um, like do some printing and then we're gonna do the, um, calculate the, how many steps we're gonna do for each epoch because we're gonna load them in kind of an iteration. Uh, we're going to create uh, this network. We're going to say uh, we're in training mode. And then for each patch in the, this uh, train loader, we are going to uh, get the patch, move it to the device for uh, the inputs and for the labels. And then we're going to prepare the gradients. We are going to pass through the network forward pass, get the losses, and then do the backward uh, like pass, and then uh, increment the optimizer. So we're gonna keep on, 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 on in, in this loop for the training uh, until we're done with, with this patch. Uh, and then after that, we're gonna uh, just um, kind of scale the loss and uh, print it. And we're gonna actually do the evaluation here. So we're gonna switch uh, to the evaluation so that we switch off the, uh, the gradients. Uh, and here we are just going to do uh, the same or a similar thing for uh, the validation loader. We're going to move them to the device, uh, the label images and the label and the validation labels. And we're going to do uh, the prediction. Uh, just pointing out, we're doing here this evaluation and, and every epoch, because again, we're just doing four epochs, so it's not a big deal anyway. Usually in your training, you will train for longer number of epochs and you don't want to do this evaluation in every epoch. So usually here, uh, you check on the mode, uh, like every 10 or every 20 epochs, you would uh, like run an evaluation step uh, for it. So the rest here, we're uh, like uh, delocating uh, the, the batch and converting it to uh, one hot, doing the activation, calculating the matrix uh, and uh, kind of figuring out if this matrix is um, the best matrix so that we can actually save the model here. And uh, we are uh, doing this print. Uh, sorry, I should have actually like ran this before, um, like I kept uh, explaining it. Uh, but hopefully this uh, training uh, would not take that long.
Yeah, so I was gonna. Um, so one thing I wanted to point out, um, just generally from this and then the activity before was, um, partially the to point out that um, you can kind of see how we you can use a lot of the existing just torch functionality for things. So it's pretty easy to match and say we want to use this loss function and this whatever else from the base PyTorch implementations. We want to use these things from Monai. We want to write a custom function and merge them all together to kind of uh, get your workflow up and running. So if you already have a workflow that's similar, but you want to use, say, one particular transform, um, that's easy enough to do. Or you want to use one of the metrics. You may have to swap around a few different lines to make sure that it matches correctly with the inputs and outputs that you need. But generally, like here, we're doing torch device. DenseNet is from Monai. Then the cross entropy loss is from torch and the atom optimizer is from torch. So the majority of that is actually torch with just the network in those cases being implemented in Monai. And even up above for the other examples, when we had to partition the classes, it was a wrapper class for Monai that made it nicer, but you don't need to do it that way. There's lots of ways that you can do it. Um, so we're kind of trying to showcase the fact that you can utilize it um, pretty freely and uh, use whichever pieces that you really need for things. I think uh, someone just won the answer for the lost style. These things up here. And yeah, this is going to take longer than I expected. <laughs> this is still the first, uh, first yeah. step. Uh, as you see, hopefully, here the, uh, the losses are uh, like decreasing. So the network is is learning. Uh, and again, uh, I, I I don't want people to like be scared of like, oh, why are we like writing uh, these loops? So as Michael mentioned, um, like the Monai is, is flexible so that uh, if you actually want full control, you, you can actually write your own loop. Uh, if not, you can just like uh, hook up handlers so that uh, you just like write down uh, what's what's the network, what what do you want to do, and I think um, I'm not sure Michael if you alluded to Monoid label, but um, like Monoid label also like simplifies uh, the, the training functionality by just implementing uh, some interface for the training. So maybe that's going to be covered in in another day. We're going to go over for Monoid well it's a demo of Monoid label, um, sure. but. Also, we're in the second epoch. Yeah, so we can maybe do another question or two here uh, while we wait for this, and then go over to to the um, metrics piece at the end. Some of these, let's see. This one says, "Could you collapse all bone labels from something like total segment or data set so you can segment all bones on a CT and maybe then separate them with connected components?" So hmm. for for total segmentary, he wants uh. Basically, I think all the bones themselves. Yeah, you you can give all the bones the same label so that you don't have as many uh, labels. That that's kind of one, one common thing. But sorry, could you um, point that question? Yeah, let me go ahead and share while, for a second, and that way we can do that over here. Yeah, I just didn't like... pick the last part. He wants to do connected components afterwards. Do it. Yeah, let me. So I'll put it here as number six. Okay. Yeah, so just as a background, total segmenter is um, kind of uh, this data set that has like 104 labels for a CT. Uh, it's very good data set. It has all, over like a thousand images. And the data set is very uh, diverse from um, like contrast and low dose and high dose CTs from uh, all over the body part. So the question was like, could you collapse all the bones? Because again, they are segmenting all the left ribs and the right ribs separately. So you have, I think like 24 uh, or more like just the ribs and then for each of the spine uh, locations. So you could definitely uh, like do collapse all of those to one label. 
So that's the first part. Um, so you can segment all the bone on the DD and maybe then separate. Uh, you can definitely afterwards do post processing with connected components. Uh, I think out of uh, the box here, the connected component that we have is uh, called key plogers connect component. So you, you only kind of remove all of them, but it is calling the underlying function of connected components. So you can uh, modify that transform by keeping the top n transformed. And that, that's a very clever way to uh, make the network size smaller so that it can run on a smaller GPU. But I think you will get a, a hit on the connected component because it, it is a heavy transform. Uh, we kind of, uh, I think, managed to move that transform to run on GPU, but it still uh, like takes a, a decent amount of time. Um, awesome yeah, then there was number seven here as well. Uh, for instance, is that like a continuation of our question or something? No. I uh, well, I think that was someone else asked um, about can... sort of la landmarking. So this is the, the oh, question okay. from before. For training um, anchor, image output. Yeah. So if it if the, if the if the question is like uh, the outputs are non images um, and non classes like coordinates and landmarks, it is going to be a regression problem. Um, so not by heat maps and. Uh, yeah, so he's asking, uh, so if the data is kind of, um, the output is going to be landmarks and coordinates, you kind of will need to um, like write your own uh, equivalent transform. So if you are doing uh, like flipping, for instance, so you will need to, the coordinate needs to be uh, like flipped, so you will do the width minus the x coordinates and the height minus and the y coordinates uh, for that uh, when, when that transform is being triggered. Um, and again, it might be trickier when you are doing rotations, especially in three D. But yeah, you are on the right path uh, to do to do that. Uh, I, if you are going to do that, I would recommend just taking the cells that, as we did uh, to actually show that and overlay the coordinates on top of the uh, the images. So you are just debugging uh, your core for your uh, random transform while you are um, uh, kind of writing that in a custom way. And then, for instance, if you have a scan of a mountain piece using a mountain camera with like this components. I don't know what you mean by uh, like splitting the scan into individual mesh components. But I, I think there was a data set for um, like every separate uh, like tooth, but there were it was a segmentation um, like data set. I can't remember if it was a private data set or a public one, to be honest. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll go ahead and stop uh, sharing for now. Oh, yeah. Um, let me share again. Yeah, we can I go over your it's... last piece. Yeah. Uh, so we are almost there. This is the force epoch. Uh, the loss is uh, pretty low. I think it started by like two. Uh, now it's like down to point one. So what once this trains, uh, maybe I can start explaining uh, the last uh, like cell. Uh, this is just gonna uh, like plot uh, like the, the 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 training and the, the kind of the evaluation with the uh, area under the curve for the validation uh, from uh, kind of when we were going through, we were actually accumulating these in the matrix values. Uh, so once this finished, hopefully here, yeah. Okay, so we were like plotting here the average loss values that um, is going through for these four epochs and the area under the curve, we're almost kind of um, even above like 99%. Uh, here, we are just 
uh, gonna run um, the evaluation on the test data sets so that we can actually um, uh, kind of figure out like what what was the performance on uh, the validation sorry on testing so here uh, we are um, kind of printing out the uh, like the precision recall the f1 uh, like scores for each of these classes and uh, giving you uh, the average accuracies so as you see uh, here like we are almost uh, like perfect uh, in, in this uh, example it, in only like four epochs. As I said, it's not that hard because the images are um, kind of very, very um, different from each other. So a CT is completely different from uh, like a CT scan. I think uh, the closest ones are the head and the abdomen. Um, this error here. Yeah, I think this one was because of the the color mapping for this one. I think I, I ran into this when I was testing it, depending on what version it was installed. For some reason, the color map mm -hmm. didn't exist anymore, um, and it used to exist. Oh, for this. So if you just change it to a different one, or just remove C map argument completely, it'll render. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Uh, uh, maybe. Yeah, the, that one worked, but then I think okay. here it's given error. Uh, so this That's is great. just showing yeah. um, the confusion matrix uh, and like um, like what was the values here. Um, you can't like all mainly the first class is the one that is confused, but you can't even um, like see how or which which one it's confusing it with because uh, the value is so great. Um, did you have a a solution for this one maybe change um that one i have not seen that issue come up when i was trying it before um, i don't think there's a rotation here yeah i can just remove that and then that should work i don't know why that was on there before yeah okay. so that works yeah um yeah so this is bringing us to the end of the notebook hopefully um like um everyone managed to get get through this uh, as michael mentioned there is a solution notebook uh and you just managed to train um like in moon eye hopefully with a, without uh, like writing too much code and you can kind of customize this to your uh, own data set um any questions that came up in the chat michael um i don't see any other ones since we looked at them last um but yeah i i Again, encourage people to go through and kind of take a look at it. If you haven't done a lot of PyTorch or just confused more by the general loop of it, um, there's probably, I, I know PyTorch has some good examples. I think there's maybe like a PyTorch in 60 minutes video that they go through and walk through what does the flow actually look like? So that might be a good starting point. And then when you come over here, you'll see what does that normal flow look like? And then how is Monai being integrated into each of the pieces? Um, so yeah, it really yeah. just kind of depends on where you're at in your journey with, with, Deep learning and medical imaging and Monai. Um, there are a lot of different resources out there that can kind of help help kind of fill in some of those gaps, I think. Yeah, and as I mentioned, I just want to point out to this uh <clears throat> like Brad's distributed data set. If you are advanced and you kind of want to like train on multiple GPUs and like uh use the most accelerated thing, I would recommend this tutorial because as uh, I'm showing here, we used kind of the most optimized thing is like loading or using the threaded data loader. And uh, here we will have uh, like a different optimizer like the Novagrad and then distributed uh, data parallelism. This is kind of uh, where uh, you can duplicate the model on all of the like GPUs and all of the nodes. And also uh, you can split the data sets so that uh, not all of the data set goes to all of the GPUs. You will, if you have like two GPUs, have the data set goes to this GPUs and uh, goes to the other one, and then you can do all the fancy stuff as like caching them or uh, like doing smart cache. So definitely check out uh, this uh, like optimized notebook um, for kind of distributed data sets. And I'll just paste the link for it. And um, Michael, I, I guess you are uh, up for the next one. Yeah. Um, thanks, Ahmed.